Hey, I'm Olivia, and I met my boyfriend Christian two years ago in college. I always thought we had the perfect relationship because we were best friends and loved each other so much. Literally all of our friends called us the dream couple. But six months ago, Christian said we needed to talk. I immediately got scared because I thought he wanted to break up with me. But instead, he said he wanted an open relationship because he missed going out to bars with his friends and he felt like he was missing out. I told him I didn't have a problem with him going out with his friends, but then he explained that it wasn't just that. He also wanted to be able to sleep with other women. He said it was like eating ice cream. I'm his favorite flavor, but sometimes he wanted to try other flavors. Whoa. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I asked him how I would know he wouldn't just find another favorite flavor and dump me, but he said I should trust him. Well, there was no way I was interested in an open relationship. For me, making love is a way of showing how much I care about someone, so the idea of him sleeping with other girls killed me. Wasn't I good enough for him? Christian was desperate to see other girls, so we decided to break up. The first few days were really hard. I couldn't stop thinking about Christian. I missed him so much, but I was also a bit angry because I felt like he had wasted two years of my life just to decide that I wasn't good enough. I felt rejected and thought my life was over. But, of course, it wasn't. A few months later, I started going out with another guy, David, and things were going well. He was only interested in me, and I felt really special whenever we were together. But then, right when I was in the middle of a date with David, Christian texted me saying he was sorry for breaking up with me. He said that he had been stupid and it was the biggest mistake of his life. Well, of course, I loved the fact that he wanted me back, even though I was with David, but... I just didn't think I could trust him again. In the end, I wrote him that I wasn't interested. But the next day, Christian came to my apartment with flowers and said, Please take me back. I can't live without you. Romantic, right? Wrong. It was so cringeworthy. It looked like he had just realized he couldn't find another girl better than me. So he wanted me back. And I also knew that if I said yes, he would only get bored with me eventually and want to see other girls again. I politely told him that I had moved on and I wasn't interested in him anymore. He looked devastated, but at least he got the message and didn't become some creepy stalker or something. After a few more dates, I decided David wasn't right for me. He was sweet, but I realized I wasn't ready for a new relationship yet. One day I'll find the right guy, the man I'll spend the rest of my life with, but this time I'll be more careful about who I date. I want to be sure my next boyfriend is mature enough to become my husband someday. Hey, I'm Mariah, and six months ago, my aunt paid for me to fly first class from Los Angeles to New York to go to her wedding. Well, you'll never guess who I sat next to on the plane. It was... Okay, I can't tell you his name, but he's a very, very famous musician who plays sellout gigs in huge arenas all the time. Let's just call him Vince. When I first saw him, I was totally starstruck, but I knew I had to ask him for a selfie, otherwise none of my friends would believe I'd met him. When I went over, Vince was super nice. He gave me a big hug and said, hey, how are you? We got to talking and I forgot all about the selfie because we were getting on so well. When I had to go back to my seat at the end of the flight, he asked for my number and said we should hang out once we were both back in LA. Of course, as soon as I left the plane, I immediately texted all my friends about meeting Vince and how he wanted to see me again. But none of them believed me without a photo. It was so upsetting. My aunt's wedding was really lovely, but all I could think about was Vince. So I got home, I texted him and said, Hey, do you remember me? I'm that awkward girl you met on the plane to New York. I couldn't believe it when he wrote back. He said, of course I remember you. You should come to my concert tonight. I'll put you on the list for a VIP ticket. It was like a dream. Vince, a world famous pop star, wanted to see me again. The concert was great and I went to the VIP area afterwards. He came straight over to me. We talked for hours. It was like we'd known each other forever. Later, we drove to his house in Bel Air and that's when things got crazy. He had a private chef cook for us, even though it was really late. The food tasted amazing, but Vince didn't like it. He threw his plate against the wall and screamed at the chef for at least ten minutes. I won't lie, I was shocked. The food was fine, and even if it wasn't, Vince way overreacted. 
I know I should have immediately walked away, but it was so flattering having someone like Vince want to date me. So I kept seeing him. It was a crazy time, all right? Vince was like two different people. He could be so sweet and loving, but then something stupid would set him off and he'd fly into a rage. I'll never forget the time he called me into the stage in the middle of a gig so he could sing a love song to me. He introduced me to the audience as his girlfriend, said how much he loved me. It was so romantic. But after the show was over, he yelled at me because I didn't smile enough during the song. He said he'd written it specially for me. But I found out later he didn't write any of his songs. He had a team of songwriters working for him. It was hard to walk away, though. He was so attractive, especially when he was on stage with all those girls screaming his name. It's hard to describe, but when everyone wants your boyfriend, you feel like the luckiest girl alive. In the end, he took things too far, and I finally left him. I saw him do things I can't tell you about on YouTube because they're so violent that this video would be demonetized. But I knew I couldn't stay with him because I don't want anyone to treat me like that. If you start dating someone famous, remember, they're only humans like anyone else. After all the time I spent with Vince, I can tell you that being a pop star is quite an easy job that doesn't require any discipline or superhuman abilities. All you do is get drunk or high and sing songs someone else wrote. Vince spent more time partying than he did working. I don't regret dating him, though, because it was a real experience living the pop star lifestyle. But at the end of the day... Just because someone is famous for their love songs doesn't mean they're actually loving. After we split, I saw an interview with him where he was asked about why he's so successful. Can you believe he actually said he's super hardworking and always searching for his next song? That was nothing like the Vince I knew. In the few weeks we spent together, he was drunk and high most of the time, even on stage. Hey. My name is Jolene, and this story is about my evil stepsister, Vanessa. When I was nine years old, my mom remarried. Her new husband was okay, but his daughter was a twelve-year-old witch that tried to make my life hell. One time she came into my room and asked if I wanted to see a magic trick. I said yes, but she told me I had to tie my foot to the bed first so I wouldn't run away. Of course, I was scared, but she told me not to be a baby, so I agreed. Once I was tied up, she brought the vacuum cleaner into my room and said, Welcome to my magic show. Today, I will make a hamster disappear. I immediately realized what she had planned and screamed, No! No! And I desperately tried to break my foot free, but it was hopeless. Next, Vanessa turned the vacuum cleaner on, walked over to my hamster's cage, and plop! She had sucked him up into the vacuum cleaner. I was screaming like crazy. My poor Mr. Blinky. Finally, I managed to untie my foot and I ran to the vacuum cleaner to rescue my hamster. But I couldn't find him. Then Vanessa said, Ha! I just pranked you. Your stupid hamster is still alive. She pulled him out of her sweatshirt safe and well. That's the kind of person she was. She made my life hell for years until she ran away from home at the age of 17 and got pregnant by some random guy. After she gave birth to her son, Freddy, she left him at our house and disappeared again. My mom gave up her career as a financial advisor so she could take care of the baby, even though she was making good money, while my stepdad kept his job as a software engineer. I thought it was unfair that my mom was taking care of Freddy because he was Vanessa's baby. My stepdad should have been the one to quit his job. I didn't say anything, though, because Mom seemed to enjoy raising Freddy. But then my mom got cancer, and she spent months inside the hospital. That's why I had to drop out of high school to look after her and Vanessa's son. I was so pissed at Vanessa. I mean, even though she wasn't living with us anymore, she was still ruining my life. Meanwhile, my stepdad couldn't cope with my mom being sick, and he fell into a deep depression and started drinking instead of going to work. He lost his job as a software engineer, and suddenly we couldn't afford to live in our house anymore. Instead, we moved into a small, one-bed apartment, and it was all Vanessa's fault. Six months later, my mom passed away. It was the closest I ever came to giving up on life. 
I'd lost the only person who truly cared about me. And then Vanessa decided to move back in with us because she had nowhere else to stay. But when I asked her to look after Freddy, she refused. That's when I lost it. I screamed at her to take some responsibility, but she only laughed and told me to take a chill pill. The next morning, Vanessa was gone again, and so was all of my mom's jewelry. Mom didn't have much, but that jewelry was important to her, and she wanted me to have it. It was worth only $2,000, but I would never have sold it. It was all I had left of my mom. That's when I had enough. I decided to move out and find my own place. My stepdad still hadn't found another job, so he could take care of his grandson. I felt bad for abandoning Freddy. I cried as I gave him one last cuddle before leaving. That kid was in for a tough life with a mother like Vanessa, but I wasn't willing to sacrifice my life for this broken family anymore. My mom and stepdad didn't have any savings. They had never planned for a worst-case scenario, so when bad times hit, they couldn't cope. They couldn't afford a nanny for Freddy or the best medical treatment for Mom. Everything fell apart, and I had to step up to take care of everything. In the end, it was too much. I don't want your pity. I just want to give you some advice. Prepare for a rainy day while the sun is still shining. Have some money saved up just in case. And surround yourself with decent people who will help you through the tough times. Because life can be damn hard. Hey, I'm Veronica, and this story is about my crazy ex-boyfriend, Marcus. We met on Tinder two years ago and had our first date at an ice cream shop. He was charming, funny, and he had a cute Canadian accent. After we said goodbye, he sent me dozens of messages saying how much he wanted to see me again. Of course, it was a bit weird, but I loved that he wanted me so badly. Things got really crazy on our second date. Marcus took me out for a romantic dinner under the night sky, and after a couple glasses of wine, he told me he loved me. And it was only our second date. You probably think I was creeped out by him, but to be honest, I felt the same way and told him I loved him too. Not long after that, he asked me to move in with him. I agreed, and at first everything was perfect. We spent all our free time together, and while at work, we would still text each other all the time. However, as time went on, Marcus slowly became more and more possessive. It started with him checking my phone whenever I came back from work, and he always asked me if I had talked to other guys. I guess I was so in love with him that I thought that this was his way of showing how much he cared about me. I even let him install a GPS tracker app on my smartphone so he could always see where I am. I mean, I had nothing to hide, right? But then things got worse, because he wanted me to cut off all my relationships with my friends and even my family. I didn't know it then, but now I understand that he was trying to isolate me so I'd be alone, helpless, and under his control. Eventually, Marcus was the only person left in my life, but I didn't enjoy spending time with him anymore. He was always angry and always blaming me for making him mad. He said I just had to love him more, so he could stop worrying about me cheating on him. He said I should be as faithful as him. The way he kept talking about being faithful, I started to get suspicious, and I asked one of my co-workers to approach Marcus during his lunch break and to ask him for his number. And guess what? He gave it to her straight away. I was so mad. When he came home, I confronted him, but he denied doing anything wrong. I played the recording that my friend made of them talking. You could clearly hear my friend Clara say, If you give me your number, maybe we can go on a date next week. And then Marcus replied, Yeah, that sounds great. However, instead of admitting he was wrong, he started to blame me, saying I was the reason he wanted to meet other girls because I didn't love him enough. I don't know why it took me so long to break up with him, but when I said it was over, he started crying and begged me not to go. He even promised he'd change. Oh my god, I was so naive. I actually gave him a second chance, but after two weeks, his old behaviors resurfaced. I told him I was going out for some drinks with people from work, 
and we had been there maybe half an hour when Marcus stormed up to the table and started yelling, accusing me of cheating on him right in front of my boss. It was so embarrassing. Turned out, he had used the GPS app to track me down. That was it. I was done with him. I was lucky not to lose my job because of his immature behavior. And this time, I broke up with him for good. Okay, let me give you some advice. If you're with someone who tries to control you, I want to tell you that that's not real love. It's abuse, and you deserve better. Hey, my name is Joe, and I was a complete loser in high school. I had no friends, no ambitions, and I spent most of my time playing video games. You know how they say things get better? Well, not for me. After I finished high school, all my old classmates went on to have really successful careers. Meanwhile, I had dropped out of college, lived with my mom, and worked at a burger joint. I hated my life so much, and I wanted to prove I could be successful too. That's why I came up with a plan. I posted on Facebook, I've won $9 million in the lotto. I thought people would be impressed, but no one believed me. One of my old classmates even wrote a comment telling me to stop lying. Well, maybe I wasn't really rich, but I asked myself if I could at least pretend to be rich. Well, the next day, I blew a whole week's salary on renting a 300,000 US dollar sports car for a few hours. I drove to my mom's home and asked her to take a photo of me. Afterwards, I immediately uploaded it to Facebook and Instagram. Within hours, I had 200 likes, which was crazy. No one called me a liar this time, and everyone was so jealous. It was such a rush. I knew I had to do it again. This time, I used two weeks pay and even sold my video game collection so I could pay for a tailored suit and fly on a private jet from Los Angeles to Las Vegas with a few other people. This time, I asked the stewardess to take a photo of me while I was sipping champagne. And as soon as we had landed, I posted it on Facebook and Instagram. This time, I got even more likes. And people were like, wow, maybe you did win the lottery, you lucky bastard. Even though I knew I was faking it, it felt amazing. Amazing. People were finally admiring me and saw me as someone important. Then I wanted to take my plan to the next level. But I didn't have enough money, and I couldn't make any more flipping burgers. That's why I quit my job and applied for a job as a salesperson. I mean, I already had a good-looking suit. Well, I couldn't believe it, but they immediately hired me. And suddenly, I was making twice as much money as I did working at the burger joint. Next, I rented a huge house in the Hollywood Hills for a photo shoot. I even hired a couple of models, and we all posed together like we were hanging out at my place. All my old classmates fell for it again. And this time, I got over 1,000 likes on Facebook alone. The best was when one of my old classmates wrote, You're one of the cool kids now. I felt like I'd finally made it. But I guess reality had to catch up with me sooner or later. I was so addicted to looking rich and successful, I got a $10,000 loan just so I could take more fake photos to impress people who never cared about me anyway. Suddenly, I was massively in debt and for such a stupid reason. I knew I had to stop. My fraud had helped me get a good job, but my sales job wasn't paying enough for me to keep faking being rich. Of course, my old classmates still think I won the lotto. But I stopped posting photos on Instagram. I don't want to go into any more debt. I wanted to let you know about the dangers of social media. Many people use it to make themselves feel important. But that's not a healthy way to live your life. If the opinions of others are the only way you can feel good about yourself, you should seriously self-reflect.